Hello. Uh, our next topic is the conditional distributions and uh, conditional means, or in more more generally, conditional expectations. Let's first think about the conditional distributions. So, uh, pr so far we have considered the distribution of a single random variable, which is intuitive. Also, we could define uh, the joint distribution of two random variables, which is also easy to understand. But then, then from the joint distribution, we can think about the relationship. And one step further, we may consider uh, conditional distributions from the joint distribution. So suppose that there are two random variables and the joint, to joint distribution shows how these two distributions uh, are correlated with each other. Then, then that means if when we say two, two random variables are correlated, you can think that when x is small or like when x is small, the distribution of y is different from the distribution of y when x is large, right? So when the variable value of x changes, the distribution of your the distribution of uh, y may be different. For example, the distribution of test scores for small classes will be different from the distribution of test scores for large classes, right? So in general, I would expect small classes will be more effective in like uh, educating students young students, so I would expect the test scores uh, are more likely to be higher than higher in small classes than in large classes. So the distribution will be uh, different. This concept it can be formulated into conditional distribution. So for example, what is the uh, distribution of test scores for small small group and another distribution of test scores for a large group. Each of them is a conditional distribution. Of course, they are conditioned on different group, small group and large group, right? So, uh, and then, then using those distributions, and remember then, let's go back to what we, so conditional distribution, conditional mean, everything is very confusing when you, condition on something, but you don't need to be confused because our basic setup is that there is a population, a population which we don't know, we do not observe, but we assume that there exists uh, the population and we we kind of think about what would happen, what we what we can do when if we uh, when we could observe the full population. Uh, now similar, then when we observe the uh, when we observe the full population, you can observe the full distribution, probabilities and expectations. You can calculate anything you want. And same here. Suppose that you observe the full population and now once you observe everything, now you only observe delete, delete the observations such that, the student teacher ratio is greater than 20 because we are interested only in this condition so from the pop population delete uh, large classes then from there the for the remaining from the remaining observations you may calculate anything you may calculate the probabilities which becomes a conditional distribution and you may calculate their mean with from the remaining observations, that will be conditional mean, and you can calculate conditional variance, conditional uh, standard deviation, whatever, conditional median, right? Everything can be calculated in the same way as before, but you just put the word conditional, right? Because you are using this variable only, the variable, the, uh, the observations that satisfy these conditions you are using the observations that satisfy the conditions. So everything is conditional, uh, probability, conditional mean, conditional variance, conditional moments, 
condition with expectation, condition with median, whatever. So uh, the concept is naturally generalized from the by imagining how we calculate the mean and probability variance in general. So conditional mean is denoted in this way. Let's think about this. Suppose that y is test score and x is class size. Then it implies that if the class size is fixed at a certain value, for example, what would be the expected test score when class size is 15, right? Then you get one conditional mean. But also you can think about what is the expected test score if the class size is 20. Then that is another conditional mean. Because the condition changed, the resulting conditional mean would be different. Maybe the same, but in general, they would be different if X and Y are correlated to each other. Right? This is the most important concept throughout this course because this is actually what we are looking for. So remember, we would like to estimate the effect of class size on test scores, or we would like to predict, forecast the test score when uh, the class size changes. Both are the same, same thing, basically. That means then you may interpret, interpret this way. If X was 15, class size was 15, what would be the uh, what would be the expected test score? That will be your predicted uh, uh, effect and uh, the forecasting of the test score. So uh, this is our target. We are aiming to estimate this guy in the end. So uh, make sure you understand how it is defined conceptually. Uh, and in the same in the same way, conditional variance, conditional standard deviation, anything, uh, anything you can do with uh, the population or the distribution, then you can do the same thing for conditional uh, setup, right? So uh, that's I believe straightforward. So then this is my uh, my I added this page. So conditional probability is written in this way. So given y, what is the probability of x? You may consider x smaller than something or x equals to something, uh, and y equals something, y greater than something. You, you have to specify what is the condition and what event you are interested in. And also remember that, so if you observe the population, then Automatically, you can calculate the conditional probability easily just by checking whether y satisfies the condition or x satisfies the condition. And then remember expectation. The definition of the expectation is the sum of probability weighted outcomes of the random variables. Uh, this is how I defined expectation or the mean uh, in my course. So you put probability as a weight for each possible outcome and then sum them or integrate them then for example expected value of x is sum of x and x is weighted by its probability so the probability is the probability of x and for example if you think about expected value of x squared you can I define it as sum of x squared and which is multiplied by its probability actually the probability is from x so probability of x and and finally if you think about conditional mean then it is the sum of x and you have to weight the outcome by the way it is about expected value of x so you are calculating expectation of x given y so only use outcome x and multiply it by conditional probability that's the difference so this part is the different uh, difference from non unconditional x so you have to use probability 
conditional on y and we know how to calculate that if you could observe the population but it's purely theoretical purely abstract concept but uh, not that difficult when you compare the ideas to the general unconditional concepts then you may uh, you may define delta in this uh, it's I think typo I don't know why it's not question mark it should be minus so delta we define delta as the expected test score for small class size minus it should be minus minus expected value of test score given large class size so under different conditions what would be the change in the expected test scores that's uh, that's uh, what we want to estimate or forecast other examples there are a lot of examples of conditional means wages of all female workers or wages of all male workers or their differences the same and mortality rate of those given on experimental treatment for example if you are vaccinated if you are vaccinated for the covid then what is the survival rate oh, between the difference in the survival rate between those who are vaccinated and those who are not right or in the thir third uh, if the conditional mean does not change as z changes even if the condition changes but the conditional mean may not change that means the x is not affected by z or correlation equals to zero but the vice versa does not hold uh, so the idea is the same the change in z even if z increases the expected value of x is constant remains constant does not change then of course they are not correlated so correlation coefficient should be zero that so uh, this is this is conditional mean can be easily understood with these examples but when uh, when you see uh, the notation you may be uh, confused so um, again like make sure you are not confused and um, make yourself familiar and you are going to see more examples and more uh, cases more 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 practice you'll do more practices uh, to understand what how we handle the conditional mean okay uh, I'm going to um, cut the video here